Welcome to Zero Experience Required. Today we're going to be changing a baby crib into a baby gate that folds into the stairwell for easy access. I did not come up with this idea, but I will link in the description the video that inspired me. As for now, let's get to the action. We start off with disassembling the baby crib that we got for very cheap off Craigslist. Uh, being careful to keep all the hardware in case we wanted to use it later. Ma primarily we're trying to get the slats so we can use it for um, the rest of the gate. Then we set up the table saw to cut the slats off and then we run it through. Since the slats are already finished, we actually won't need to do much to it. This will save us a lot of time. These slats will be used for the up-down members of this. We will be drilling holes in them so that they can uh, hinge on a dowel, which I will later show. Now after I cut it, I noticed something slightly unfortunate. I assumed that they were just mortise and tendon all the way in, but they actually were insert inserted as dowels. So as a result of cutting it, as once the dowel was cut, it released and fell. Though it left this little nub that I'm going to have to cut off every last one. So Next I start trimming up the pieces to make them all the same size. This is very important because the parallelogram that we're going to be making requires everything to be exact. There's very little room for it to be off. So... I'm making sure each one is cut the same way and is the exact same length. I have a stop set in this miter saw, which will help you me do that. Measuring the staircase, I realize that it's three feet across and it's pretty consistent. I have some old oak that is one by two that I'm marking to be 34 inches and then cutting it. These will be the top and the bottom of the uh, baby gate. So I'm making sure that they're consistent. So I've done some math here. This being 34 inches long, and these being spaced every three inches according to the original crib, that makes it so I need 11 of these. So I have too much. The other bit is for me to space this every three inches, it's not gonna come out even. Though actually you don't want it to come out even in the first place because you want one really close to the edge for the hinge to attach to and one actually out a bit for the uh, hook to get onto. Now I'm going to be uh, drilling this piece in one block. My drill press has the depth for it. So I only need to measure and mark once instead of on two pieces. So here I'm measuring every three inches and then a half inch away from the edge and then marking it with a awl to try to help uh, the drill press drill in the right spot. Here I'm drill pressing the uh, holes and trying to make sure they're nice and straight and consistently placed. I really should have done some pilot holes first and made sure that they were um, placed correctly before drilling all these holes with the, the dowels with drill bit, but I didn't and I suffered from that. As you'll see later on, some of these holes are off quite a bit, and that caused me issues, which I managed to overcome. The next task is to drill all the holes in the slats. Now, I didn't want to measure and mark each one individually, so as you can see here, I am making a jig to drill out those consistently. It'll clamp in place the slot, slat, and then allow me to consistently drill the hole in each of these slats. And coming up is a demonstration of why you really need to make sure to clamp everything you're working on. Now I was able, with the assistance of a clamp, to um, secure this thing to a uh, board, which then I can clamp on to the drill press. I felt quite victorious there. To get the drill press set up, you need to uh, mark the first one properly so when it does drill, it um, drills where you need to consistently. You need to have some pretty hefty clamps to uh, hold down this piece though, as you'll see right here. 
once it's held down properly it clamps it's just a matter of just drilling through all of them and also making sure that none of the sawdust or actually shavings interfere with the placing of the uh, slat and it's just monotonous work after you got it set up but it's a lot easier than measuring on each one and that is why you build jigs like this here's the tricky step we want to cut a rabbit through here for the dowel for these to go through. These with the caliper, about 0 0.45, 0 0.6, 0 0.46, pretty much across all of them. I checked them multiple times, just grabbed around once. Some actually seem to be thicker. 0.7 seems to be you know, the extreme. So, 0.47, since we don't want these to bind, let's do 0.47. This, because it's been planed, is pretty much perfectly one. It's 1.01. .01. Let's just say it's one. So, that means 0.4, Seven. Let's just round up to 0.48 to make the math easy. That means we have 5.2 to divide in half, and that's 2.5. So each side needs to be 2.6, and that's what we'll set on the table saw. Now, what I'm going to be doing is making multiple passes to make the rabbit. Since I don't own a dado blade, and those things are quite expensive, I decided that making multiple passes is the best way for me. So, it's not that bad. It just requires a little more cleanup, as you'll see later. And once I've made multiple passes, making slight adjustments on each, trying to clean it out, I've got a pretty good result. And then I used a half inch chisel to clean up anything that was remnant in both pieces. And this was actually very much needed. Now, to cut the dowels, I figured that I would make a little jig where what I will do is I will put the dowel inside this hole I've already drilled and then just cut it over and over again with this already pre spaced table saw. And that will allow me to just keep pushing them out. Sorry, they got mostly a shot on my shoulder, but I made 22 of these and it actually was really easy. I would pull up on the dowel to lift it from the table saw and then I'll be able to just reset it. A sample dry fit here and I was able to get three of them to fit in. I was only trying to get four in, but only three fit. This dowel's not lining up. I'm quite pleased <laughs> at least three of them did because after I pulled it off the table saw, I realized that these weren't straight and I looked at it with a, uh, caliper and it said some of these holes are off by even a tenth of an inch so my plan is I'll just take these holes for the center slats since they're pretty much all off slightly and just drill a slightly bigger hole and that'll give me the wiggle room I need I was hoping for pure precision here but that was asking too much of me and my skills and my tools the next step is to curve the top of the slats so they won't bind and there's many ways you can do this. You can do it on the table saw, which I did not film. You can do it on the band saw, which you, as you can see right here I'm doing. Or you could use a sander, which actually I found it actually be the easiest way. Because it comes out consistently that way, where with the band saw you require more skill. Here I'm doing a full dry fit of everything to make it so uh, I know that everything works. I found that a gentle persuasion with a rubber mallet actually makes it so the dowels go in even if they don't want to. Some of the ones required a little more drilling. I then disassembled it and numbered each slat so I know which one will fit. Next we do final finishing. Cutting 45 degree angles into the top and bottom pieces make it so when it's lifted up it won't hit the wall and gouge it. Next we use a round over bit but right here I make a mistake and don't support it so it drops down in and leaves a permanent gouge. But I learned from my mistake and I make sure not to let that happen on the rest of it. And then I just 
go through and route everything and make it look nice and pretty and smooth. This is a very much needed unless you want to sand on the inside. And then of course round the top and the bottom, I guess. Next we get the belt sander to give a nice curve on that 45 so it's not so rough on the hands. We also sand the sides and just try to get every angle to kind of be smoothed down. And here is why I had to drill some of the holes a little larger on the slats. As you can see in this hole it's perfect, but as we move towards the center, they get less perfect. To the point where they're not even lining up at all. So here I'm working on the piece that's going to attach to the wall. I'm actually using the old top of the slats as you can see with the dowels. I'm going to cut right in between here to make it so one I get rid of that ugliness and two, it's short enough that no matter how the top and bottom pieces move, it's a, not going to touch this. So, there's that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to countersink some screws into here, and then the hinges are going to go on this. That's going to attach one of the slots, and hopefully that's strong enough. I'm going to be working on the piece that the uh, top piece is going to lay down on top of. And... For that to work, we need something the size of a slat to fit in. This is the slat I was using to set up the drill press to make sure it was lined up right, and therefore it's trash. So let's cut this down to size. Let's do a fancy 45 degree angle for the other bit. Actually first, let's cut it, cut off this bit so it'll lay flat against another piece on the table. So here I'm just eyeing it to uh, line it up so it will just cut off and make it flat. Plugging it in helps. And this piece are going to be the catch. So what I need to do is now drill holes through this and put a screw through or two. That's gonna hold. That's what the gate's gonna latch onto. So, so these two screws came with the baby gate that I tore apart, and they're the perfect height and width. I just needed a pilot hole for them, and that's what I plan to do next. I then do the same methodology of using the caliper to measure and mark and then an awl to help set up the drill. Since this piece is so small, I'm putting it inside a clamp when I drill it to prevent it from spinning and hurting me. And we'll see how that works. When I sink this, I just use another drill bit. Put the screw in. Yep, it did not split the wood. Good. Might hurt because I should clamp this. I really should. Go. Oh. <laughs> Wrong one. Perfect. So let's try this again. Double check that it's somewhat straight. I deleted footage of me drilling some crooked holes. Times the charm. So. Let's kind of sink that. Let's put the screw in. And that's good enough for government work. So here we have all the parts pre finished, pre final uh, assembly, and they're ready to go. This has been routed, it's nice and smooth, no longer harsh in the hand, no longer giving me splinters. This is the piece that's going to mount against the wall. We're going to have a uh, hinge, actually two hinges, one attached to here, one attached to this slot. And I have already marked these slots with the previous guy fit in which way they go. And then there's this piece, I'm just going to ride like that. And what's funny is, that's actually pretty perfect. I did not plan for that to match up like that. So that's going to come down onto that. And Let's do a dry fit before finishing. See if we need to do any more work. Let's attach the hinges. 
Let's assemble it. And then maybe we'll take it apart and finish it. <laughs> so I started doing what I considered final assembly. I'm not going to take it apart after I did this because it was so much pain to get them to go in together. I figured out what the way I did it the first time was best, where you do both sides and that gets the spacing. Uh, when I tried to do it from one side to the other, it just ca started to cause more frustration. Actually, it was harder to put it together this time than it was the first time. So I actually uh, managed to damage a few of the dowels trying to just force them in with the uh, rubber mallet, and I ended up having to use my reserve cuts on those. But Ultimately, it worked. The next step is to attach the hinges to the piece that would uh, hold it to the wall. First, you put the hinge on, then you mark it with a pencil, and then you drill in the center of that hole that was marked, and then you uh, proceed to put the hinge on. So my camera died, and I was unable to show you how I attached these hinges. The problem is the screws were too long for the slats. They would have gone right through and poked through. I could have taken an angle grinder to it, and... That would have solved that problem, but I decided to go a different route. Instead, I decided to cut out some risers with some uh, remainder slat, and that makes it so the screws don't poke out anymore. I was hoping to drill so the holes wouldn't even show on the other end, but they did. So Now I've marked the holes for this side, and we will proceed to drill those out. Now here, when I... Uh did this I used for the pilot hole a drill bit that was too small it made it so it was too hard for the uh, screws to go in and two of the heads broke off I just left it because the amount of effort to pull out those heads is just not worth it and I decided four screws would be strong enough to hold it but before I dry install it I need to have some holes for installing so let's drill those now the drill bit I used here was large enough that the threads of the screws that hold it to the wall wouldn't even touch it. So now I need to glue these dowels in because I realize the more I move it, the more likely they are to fall out. So to do that, I've also figured out that some of them are loose in this position, some of them are loose here, some of them are loose like this, and some are loose like this. It's all because I didn't drill these holes right, and it was a lot more forgiving than I originally thought it was going to be. So to glue this, I do is I have a punch. So make it almost as deep as this piece. Take a toothpick, put in the glue, and you just run that outside. Now I'll put glue on there. And then the easy part to get it back in, put it back on the workbench, push down, and wipe it off. One dowel glued. I only glue on one side, mainly because I don't want to have it so if I glued on one side, flipped it over, pushed it out, put the other glue, that glue would get on the slats. And also for issues with possible expansion. So it'll make it so there's no issues there. Once the glue's set, you can sand and then finish it. For finishing, I'm not going to show it on camera. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blue tape the slats since they're already finished. And then I just plan to put a layer of polyurethane on this oak. Now install is pretty simple. For the first screw, you just kind of line it up where you want. You just kind of mark the hole. Drill the first hole for piling and sure hope you hit a stud. Use the stud finder first. First one in. Then you use a level to make sure it's straight. For the second screw. Oh, thank you. I have my lovely, wonderful, beautiful assistant helping me. Drill for the second one. Ta-da! Boom. Okay, and now for the, the hook part, you just want to make sure that this is level for aesthetic purposes. And then kind of mark the top. And 
and then you proceed to drop your level on the floor and then ruin the rest of your tools somehow. Then you just make sure that this is level. <laughs> well, let's see if the baby can get through. For the stronger babies like mine, you, you can uh, probably put something in the bottom. I was going to say, put a stop on the bottom of it. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. And if you anything I did wrong, comment if you. If you all. Uh, like what I did, like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you. So here I'm working on the... Big Belly.